Jeff Ritter with Essex Park Services. Clearly, if you're just running street usage, my obvious question is, what's the point of this? Why do you need a big brake kit if you're not running on the track with it? Well, a lot of people just like it because it looks nice, um, <laughs> which is, honestly, there are plenty of people that buy them just for that reason. Um, some people will buy a caliper cover, which we talked about. Mm -hmm. um, one of the big things you always have to think about if you're going to go street or track is there are going to be some compromises regardless of what product you buy. Uh, on the big brake kit side specifically, um, you run into issues like uh, a very obvious one, which is caliper finish. So with something like this, you've got uh, an anodized finish with the machine logo. Now an anodized finish isn't ideal for road salt to be in contact with. Uh, it just won't hold up as well. Whereas if you have something like a painted caliper or a powder coated caliper, it's just going to hold up better. Um, other features, um, we, I think we wanted to talk about this a little later, uh, a road ca car caliper is going to have dust boots, whereas a, a competition caliper won't. It's really tough, um, you know, does it feel better? Yes, it's true. If you, if you put a kit like this on your street car and um, you know, your factory caliper was a slider caliper, and there's a lot of give in that system, and you feel it through the pedal. I mean, something like this, an opposed fixed caliper, is gonna feel much better. You're gonna, the pedal's just gonna feel a lot firmer, it's gonna feel nicer. Um, this, this caliper may have 50 pad options for it, whereas your factory caliper, particularly on a new car, like when, a, when the FT86 came out, you know, the first year, there aren't that many pad options if it's a new shape because the manufacturers haven't had a chance to make it yet. So something like a big brake kit will give you a lot of options. You have all kinds of different street or track friction available for it. This is an extremely capable caliper, capable of heavy racetrack use. Um, it's just not quite as optimized as a full-out race caliper. So. Um, if you do drive in both environments, the street and the track, then this is a great product for you because you're still getting the bigger disc with the um, directional vanes and the J-hook slot pattern and all the benefits of the fixed opposed caliper. So there are tons and tons of benefits. Many of the benefits of the full-out race kits are also found in this kit. Okay. It's just not quite as extreme. Okay. Um, you know. How long do you think these, I mean, there's, that's a lot of discussion about it. Once you destroy the dust boots, yeah. it's pretty much, you, I mean, the whole point of it being streetable is kind of destroyed a little bit. Or, I mean, you're basically turning it into that without the yeah. dust boots. Yeah. How long are these dust boots, I mean, this is, doesn't apply just to AP racing, but generally, uh -huh. how long are they going to last on a track before they destroy it? Well, I, I mentioned it earlier, I mean, it may be as little as one session. It's going to depend on a huge number of factors, you know, who's the driving it, what track's it on, how big the disc is, how much heat's in it. So it's kind of all over the map, and then you really have to just keep an eye on it. Um, some people just get rid of them, and they just stop running them. Let's say you're really easy on brakes, and I'm really hard on brakes, and I'm driving at Road America, and you're driving at Willow Springs. Um, Road America's horrific on brakes. It's really hard. That track in particular, you're hitting high speeds and you're going down to very low speeds and I'm really personally tough on brakes. So my usage for two times of the track is far different than your, your usage. So it gets tough when we talk to customers because they'll say, hey, here's my situation. It's very, it's going to vary a lot by person. So you really have to just keep an eye on it yourself. Um, if you start to see any kind of fluid coming out around the pistons, that's an indicator that you better get it checked out. If you look at the pistons and you see on the edges, let's say the pistons are extended and you see on the edges of their nicks, or I mean it should look very smooth. There, if you see nicks or scratches or those sorts of things, that can cut the seal inside of there. Um, so you just need to keep an eye on it and look for things like that. Any damage around the pistons, um, if you have fluid leaking out of your bleed screws, you, you might want to get that checked out. Uh, a note about that though, when you first install them, there's going to be a little residual fluid in there. We actually make a note about that in our install manuals. A lot of times that will actually come out, or when the calipers are first delivered, there's a little residual from testing in there on the bench. Um, so just be aware, don't freak out if there's a, if anyone buys a kit, don't panic that there's a little trickle of brake fluid coming out of here the very first time you use it, because that's 
happens all the time. We always get the call, oh, my brakes are, f no, they're okay, don't panic. So we've, uh, we've kind of escaped uh, Jeff from Essex. He just let us on our own here, and we found some tips, so. We're gonna touch tips. <laughs> we've just touched tips, and uh, we're gonna drink from our chalice. <laughs> This is the Essex uh, rebuild area, caliper rebuild area. And uh, this is basically if you're a race team or a customer who has an AP kit, it's gonna come here if you need your rebuild done or just clean up. Uh, they have an ultrasonic cleaner and uh, some other equipment that can just make your products like brand new. If you look at a disc, a lot of times you'll see a slot that actually goes all the way out to the edge. Um, that can be a bit problematic. Um, usually that's where a crack will start. So you don't want a slot that goes all the way out the edge outside or on the inner diameter either. You don't want that either. Um, so the J-hook is, and also you don't want slots that are just spaced really far apart. You'll see some discs where you'll have a slot here and then another one way over here, another one over here. That's not ideal either. The whole idea with the J-hook is to keep um, heat spread evenly throughout the disc. So if you watch one of these run on a dyno, and I can share a clip with you guys and, and, and you'll just get to see it. Um, the whole disc, all the way from out here to in here and all the way around will be nice and red in an even, even uniform manner. Um, so that's the primary reason. And then the other reason too is all these little slots, all, the, all these are leading edges for the pads to uh, bite into. You know, the thing is with these big brake kits is you just, you take how you take it for granted. Like Scott, when he drove my car for a day, like there's just, he picked up a lot of men. <laughs> uh, Jeff, I got a real problem. This truck needs to get moved over about two millimeters this way. Uh, I have a hot dog I want to put on the other side. It's just not fitting. 